what a lichen is. Nope. Yes. No. Nah. A lichen? No. Nah. Yes. yes. If you had to guess, what do you think a lichen is? I think it's a thing on a rock. <laughs> Never mind. I don't know how to describe it. Like, I know what it is, but I don't know how to describe it. It has like crustos or crutos. That's one of the things. Um, some, like something to do with cells or a plant. Sounds like something that would be in like a like a lake, something like something in water. Uh, it makes you like something. <laughs> Mix between a fungus and an algae, or something of the sort. Like it's two things in one. You like find them on trees. What are lichens? Well, lichens are interesting organisms. They're symbiotic organisms, really, composed of. Um, at least two fungi and then green algae and or cyanobacteria. So some lichens can be composed of three or four different organisms uh, together in an association. So one of the members is, is the, the fungus, or what we call the mycobiont, and the other member is a photosynthetic member, or the photobiont. And they live in such a way that, that the green algae provide nutrients and um, food essentially for the fungus because the fungus cannot make their own food. They rely on, on um, other organisms to, to get their energy. So it's a neat uh, and very complex um, way of life, I guess, of symbiosis. Do you know what an herbarium is? No. No. <laughs> no. And no. No. If you had a guess, what do you think a herbarium is? It sounds like a disease. <laughs> um, a place. A berry, a flower. I'd say it's something like in our boredom, um, some place that like holds certain biological life, trees or something of the sort. Can you explain what a herbarium is and what's the purpose of it? So an herbarium is, is simply a collection of pressed and dried plants um, that are used for study. And that's the simplest definition. I sometimes will tell uh, students and people that a herbarium is kind of like a library for plants, if you will. If you're interested in a particular group of plants, you can come to the herbarium and see what we have here and begin to study them and ask questions. Um, but it's it's much more than just a you know a dusty collection of plants because with the te technology nowadays, you can take a small snippet of a dried plant leaf and extract DNA from it. So all of a sudden, your herbarium becomes a DNA bank, and um, it's just critical for any type of question in biology. It begins with having collections in a museum somewhere. Why are they important ecologically and other? Well, lichens uh, in many cases are what we call pioneer species in many environments. So they're the first thing to, you know, latch onto rocks or trees or things like that in an environment. Mm -hmm. And so they can actually have an effect in helping to break down rock. It's a, it's a slow process um, over many years, but that is uh, one, one part they play in the, in the ecosystem as well, so. There's so much we don't know. Um, the discovery of two fungi in association with lichens occurred only in 2016. So for almost 150 years, we thought lichens were one thing and they're not what we thought they were. And so I think it's good to challenge the paradigm that's out there. Um, there's a lot of different things about how the lichen, or excuse me, how the fungus contacts and associates with the green algae cells that we don't understand. Somehow they communicate and, and transfer nutrients and that sort of thing, but that's still very unknown. So there's a lot we know about lichens, but there's there's probably just as much we don't know. Why are you personally interested in lichen? I became fascinated with lichens um, basically through a graduate course that I took. And um, they're so diverse, they occupy so many different habitats uh, across the globe, and they're kind of a mystery to solve, to kind of under understand and identify. And so I, I, I've always enjoyed them because I think of it like a puzzle trying to figure out what they are, and, and um, that's why I like them. What has been your, your favorite part working in Auburn's herbarium, or just like in the field you work in in general? Well, the thing that I love most about uh, my job, what I do, is the diversity of things I get to do. So I can stay indoors and identify plants or lichens. Um, I get to, to do uh, individual research and collaborative research, publish papers. I get to take my research findings to uh, scientific meetings. Uh, plus, if I want to wake up one morning and 
drive to the forest and start collecting plants, I can do that too. So I get a lot of diversity of, of um, I, de- I guess, tasks, if nothing else. Uh, and so I can do a lot of different things. Um, so that, that, that makes it enjoyable and diversify what I get to do every day. What is your research dealing with lichens? So my research has primarily dealt with um, documenting the lichen diversity for the state of Alabama. 20 years ago when I arrived at Auburn and asked several botanist friends what they knew about lichens for the state, um, they didn't know anything. And so I just began to document at that point uh, just the diversity of lichens. And we're still discovering new lichens all the time, um, not because they're particularly rare, but just because nobody's looked for them. And so um, that's what I've been focusing on the last 20 years and uh, not only doing my own collections, but also collaborating with other researchers who come to the state and collect. We're building the, the, the checklist of lichens for Alabama, and it's nearing uh, probably 850 to 900 species of lichens in Alabama right now. Yeah, we are actually the state herbarium, the largest, uh, not by much, but by a little bit. We've got over 80,000 specimens mm-hmm. that we house here. So, Is there anything else that you want us to know about lichen or the herbarium or anything else you really thought we should touch up on? Well, lichens are, one thing I will mention about lichens, one of them goes back to the question of why I was really interested in it, because they occupy every single terrestrial habitat in the world, um, even more than plants do, uh, vascular plants. And some estimates, uh, 7% of the Earth's surface is covered with lichen. And that's a pretty high percentage for an organism that most people know nothing about. So that was one thing that, that uh, also drew me to uh, wanting to understand and begin to uh, study lichens. The lichen life cycle is complex due to the fact that lichens are really two symbiotic organisms. Lichens generally reproduce asexually and symbiotically. The first step begins when the fungal hyphae grows around a small clump of alga cells and forms a structure known as the cerita. Next, the cerita breaks off from the main body and is carried by the wind. After landing, the cerita begins to divide and form a new lichen thallus. The thallus continues to grow and eventually becomes the new growth form of the lichen. The sexual life cycle of lichens is dictated by the fungal component. Here, the sexual reproduction of a lichen with an ascomycota biont is pictured. The fungal component produces a structure called a pycinida. The pycinida captures another fungal spore called a microconidia, an asexual spore, and fuse. After the cells and nuclei fuse, the fungal component releases ascospores via meiosis into the environment. The fungal cell germinates and begins to grow, but it is not yet considered to be a lichen. It does not become a lichen until it envelopes alga cells. After enveloping the alga cells, the symbiotic relationship between the two groups of cells is formed, and they continue to grow together to form a lichen thallus. The thallus then continues to mature into a complete lichen growth form.